my topics that I always give Adam, I'll be honest, sometimes uh, I don't really follow the topics, but uh, I really want to make sure today that if there's questions you have, we leave some time for those questions. Uh, I think that's one of the most important things that you uh, get a chance to ask some questions and uh, because there's so many different ways to play this game and all I'm trying to do is present what I've learned from my observations of the game over a number of years and I'm very fortunate that I get to travel the world to see basketball taught and played in many different contexts and I also get every day I, have to s I get up and I try to figure out how to win a gold medal that's my job so I'm always researching sports not just basketball I really thought Kirby had a great statement yesterday and I totally agree with it that at the higher levels and I would even say at the younger levels if you can't shoot the ball and you can't defend on the ball your team is going to struggle because good teams will figure out that and take advantage of it and at the higher levels I get all the time I get coaches will say well I got this really good player I think she should play in the national team and I would say well she can't shoot I, I'm sorry if she can't shoot she's never going to make it on the national team because people will not guard her and they'll double team or she can't defend a position if you can't defend a position you're going to struggle because we can't be helping all the time so I'm just going to give you a couple little thoughts that I have on shooting and on defending the ball that we're really trying to focus in on guys just have a seat for a second just have a seat for a second we'll get that all organized now on my sheet here there's a section on the, that, the right side it says biomechanic, biomechanical principles this is science there's five things that are in every shot no two shots look the same but these five things are in every shot the first thing is there's a ready position you have to be ready and the ready position is to get you ready to do two things you need to be able to have a backswing to generate a force and then that force has to go through a critical release point and then there has to be a follow through one of the problems with coaching is I can demonstrate things in slow motion that don't actually happen in fast motion and we've sometimes through coaching have actually taught things that don't really actually happen at game speed or at, in real life motion and we've coached some good things out of players and I think backswing is one that's a very controversial but it has to be there and here's what I always do with players coaches just put your hand on your chest like this take this finger and just lift it up and then push it to your chest as hard as you and fast as you can so that simulates no backswing so that would be like shooting where I start in this position and then all you do is push the shoot there's no backswing now take that finger and I want you to just flick it you tell me which one's faster and which one's more powerful the backswing <laughs> so you need a dip and when you coach a dip out of players you're making them slow and you're taking away their elastic power that's how our muscles actually work now context if I'm shooting right under the basket if I was shooting from right here the only place I need backswing maybe is just my wrist that's it I'm strong enough just with a little flick of my wrist I can shoot the ball so a lot of tall players, NBA players, who shoot from way up here, that's, all, that's the only backswing there might be just a little need. They don't need a backswing with their arms because you're shooting very close. Elena Deladon, one of the greatest female players in the world, she shoots foul shots like this. She just has a little knee bend and a little wrist. She's one of the all-time leading foul shooters in the world, 96% I think it is. But she's, again, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, tall, strong. She doesn't need backswing in her whole body. But as I start to back out to shoot out here, I need a backswing in my wrist, in my hand, I need it in my upper body, and I need it in my lower body. 
Steph Curry is probably the longest shooter in the NBA, but don't tell me that he's the strongest. There are some seven footers who are a lot stronger, but they can't shoot from three. It has nothing to do with their strength. It has to do with they haven't coordinated the rhythm of a backswing to a force generation through a high release point or critical instant. Okay, so we have to make sure we have backswing. And the one that we as coaches have taught out of players is this action. And what we've taught players and what players are do by, we start them in this position, especially on the female side, we have a whole generation of players who, sh who get their backswing by doing this. If I go back like this, I'm, what's my first movement forward? It's this. If I do this, what's my first movement? It's this, because I'm stretching these muscles, which make me go up. When I do this, I'm, I'm this. So you have players, we have a whole generation of players that shoot. And remember I talked just about open range and on balance? One of you guys stand up here. Come on up here. You're, you're a big, tall guy. Who's another good shooter? Who's a good shooter? Come on up. Give me a shooter. Give me a shooter. You all should have jumped up. What are you all? Somebody says, who's the shooter? You jump up. Somebody says, who's the best defender? You all jump up. Right? Especially you go to a tryout. Right? Now, show me your shooting range. Where do you think you can shoot from pretty effectively? Okay. Stand over here. Are you open if he stands here? Are you open? Put your hands up. Are you open to shoot? Okay, step forward. Are you open to shoot? Hands up. Step forward. Are you open to shoot? Okay, so he has to figure it out. Now, let me be you. If I'm this type of shooter, back up. If I shoot like this, where I shoot from down here, give me the ball, put your hands up. Oh, I'm not shooting. I'd, I'd probably have to be about here to get my shot off. But if I'm looking under the ball and his hands are down, I'm open. I'm still open, unless he's going to headbutt the ball. I, I would say I'm still open. In fact, I would contend I'm still open here. Now, the issue people say, but if you have to do this dip, you're slow. But that dip is probably happening on the catch. Does that make sense, coaches? It's happening on the catch is when we're dipping. But I need that dip to go up if I'm going to shoot from here. And when you coach it out of your players, we cause problems. So, everybody up, guys, quick. Everybody up with the ball, with the ball. Couple little things to work on this. Just spread out at this basket, half down at that basket. Quick, quick, quick. Now, can I see your ball for a second? And your name is? Taven. Taven. Now, if I'm a learn to train, first begin to play basketball, we used to teach shooting like this. We used to say, ready position, we go one, two, three. Well, what I do now is we start like this. And we go one, there's my dip, one, two, three. So I'm a little 10 year old tour. That's how I'm teaching them to shoot now. One, two, three. One, two, three. And somebody says, Mike, well, that step makes them slow. But if I shot off the dribble, does that look like what I just showed? That's that exact same position. If I was stepping into my pet, does that look like the same position? It's the same position. And the only time they're probably actually going to do that in the game is at a foul shot. Because everything else is either off the dribble or the catch. But they're learning the rhythm and getting generating that power. So guys, pretend you're 12 year olds, 10 year olds. You want to start? One, two, three. And you go a little, work your rhythm. Way you go. Way you go. Go ahead, shoot. Now, do we want to go all the way down here? No, it's, it's that quick, quick down up. And stop. Now, as they progress a little bit, that's your ball, hold the balls, guys. 
Now we're a little older. We're going to start with the ball. We're going to do our snap down that I showed yesterday. We're going to start with the ball like we did here in a snap down up on my toes. And I'm going to work on that snap down. And I'm snapped into my shooting position and I'm ready to a shot. So it's snap, shot. Okay, way you go. So they're learning that quick, elastic energy into their shot. And I'm working on the rhythm of their body, that coordinated movement. Now, and stop guys, there's a lot of issues here with core. A lot of them, when they snap, see that bending? I need to be able to lock these two pieces of my body together so when I snap, I'm a solid, uh, think of it like a big spring. It's got to be able to collapse and then pop back up, but if the, if the spring collapses and starts going that way and that way, I'm losing my force. Okay? And stop. Okay. Another, another couple little ones we do. Your name is Paul? Wait up here. Why don't you start Paul with the ball, looking under it. In close, again, he only needs elasticity now, probably in his hand and his bow or butt. So you're just going to do little hops, and then shoot, okay? That's it, and then shot. Everybody see what you're doing? Way you go. Little hop. So we're working now, mostly this is on the elasticity of the lower body. Okay, just getting them elastic in the lower body. And it also, if you watch closely, you'll see the elasticity in the wrist. You'll see the, they'll be doing that. The one they're not getting is this. This is more like a close-in put-back shot. And stop. Okay, now you're going to go hip turn, hip turn, hip turn, shot. Hip turns. This is helping them with their balance, helping them get the, on rhythm. And stop, just trying to show you this. Now, you can start moving this out further where they will have to actually get more of a dip. I'm not gonna show that, but they have to be working on that dip. I, with younger players, teach shooting off the dribble first before I do off the pass, because I find off the dribble, they get the natural dip and rhythm. Just in the bouncing of the ball, they're getting that rhythm of the dip. And it's much an easier transfer to the game. So I teach much more shooting off the dribble. I showed you some of that yesterday, I think. Okay, where they're shooting off the dribble. Self-toss shooting is a skill that sometimes doesn't transfer to the game. So as much as possible, I try to do more shooting off the pass. What I want to just talk now about is, guys, just have a seat for a second, is the zero, one, two step and how that impacts shooting. The first thing is, I get, every time I talk about zero, one, two step, I get coaches saying, well, the refs are not going to allow you to do that. It's a travel and I don't like it. And I go, I'm just telling it's the rule. It's like when the shot clocks came in. Uh, I still remember Bobby Knight saying when the shot clocks came in the United States, or sorry, it's the three-point line, said, well, we're never going to shoot them. I think it's a stupid rule. Well, his team didn't do too well that year. And then the next year, who, who did he recruit? Well, a guy named Steve Alford, who was one of the best <laughs> three-point shooters. So he realized real fast, it's here to stay. I, it doesn't matter if I like the rule or not. I love the 0-1-2 step. The first reason was it was very confusing because boy, the way the old rule was written, every time I caught a ball, can I see your ball for a second? Zero, one, two, well that's a layup. That's always been a layup, that's never been a travel. But the rule was, because it talked about a pivot foot, it said, that's my pivot foot, oh, I lifted it, it's gotta be a travel. And so referees around the world were starting to say, I'm calling those travels. And the people with smarter brains said, whoa, that's not what was intended in the game. So now we came up with a rule, but we had to make it consistent. And why I like the zero one two step, it, it is safe. It can eliminate injuries because I can play at speed and stop safely. It is very difficult to be going at full speed and catching or dribbling and on a zero one to stop effectively. 
but now I'm allowed zero, one, two, and I can safely stop and not tear my knee up or my ankle. I can safely stop. Okay, that's the intent. It has not changed anything at the start of your move. All the travels are still travel. But here's where it's really impacted the game, especially at the women's level. Uh, come on, Chris. Your name is? Any? Any? Why don't you start in under the basket? You guys know what a floppy cut is? Floppy? You're coming off a pick to here to shoot. So start on the pretend you're coming. Give me another player. Set the uh, screen down here. Set the screen. You're running off this screen to shoot a ball right here. Right? Oh, that's a three. Okay? So you start on there and you come off the screen. Let's watch his feet. Here we go. Go ahead. Your shot. Yep, go again. Start again. Let's go live. I need a three, though. A three from the, o the outside three. Okay? So I travel. No, because what he did was, let's go slow. What he did was, he came out, he went, this was a zero, and then what did he do, coaches? He hopped to two. It's legal. Okay? And on this side of the floor, for right-handed players, that's what you see most of the time. Let's do it on the other side. Here we go. Was he in rhythm? Try shooting in rhythm. This is a tough one to shoot in rhythm, the way he's trying to shoot it. Here we go. Okay? That's tough on that side to shoot in rhythm. It's not, though, if he uses a 0 1 2 step. So if I'm coming out on this side, what he's trying to do, he's been taught inside pivot. He's been taught to do an inside pivot all the time. That's the old way. Because I would do my zero, then my twist to one. There was hardly any players in the world who could shoot that shot effectively. If I'm sprinting out with a defender chasing me, that is really hard to do. And the, and the torque you have to put on this foot to twist and stop. But if I'm allowed to zero, one, two, I can come out and catch on this one. Zero, one, two. And it has changed <laughs> the ability now to use these actions where you're sprinting away from the basket and still get squared up to shoot. So at the uh, World Cup, the number of players who are now coming hard to the sideline to shoot, and Kia Nurse is an example. Kia has now can come flying out and still get off a balanced control shot. Whereas before, you just couldn't control that speed. Okay? So it really, really has changed the way that we can now run different actions on offense and safely get shots for players who are not as strong because they have that extra step to get square. Okay? That's all I want to talk about. Okay, we need you a partner in the ball quickly. And I only, let's get, only give me about uh, three pairs, three pairs. One here, offense, defense. You want partner in the ball? Partner in the ball, I'm right at the top. It's guarding the ball. Okay, right here in the wing, guys, right here in the wing. One ball only. Now we're going to, talk about guarding the ball and your positioning. So the first thing is we have a ball here on, on a wing. Now let's start with the one on the top. I always say there's seven positions you can play on this ball. Seven play ways you can guard this ball. So the first way your name is? Brendan? Br Brendan. Show me what you think a square defense on and your name is? Chisholm. Chisholm? Show me square. Okay. So he's square, he's parallel. Now, only thing I would say, Brent, we need a little more elbows over knees in your stance. Always want elbows over knees for balance. And I think you need to have a slight stagger, Brent. So you want, that's it. Okay? So that would be square. Everybody, show me square. Now, the key you've got to understand, coaches, see as we arc around, it's square to the arc to the player. I remember we used to do this drill where we'd have everybody lined up in lanes and they'd all just be square to the baseline. Well, then as soon as we played in the game, he would be thinking that this is square. 
right? Because he had always been taught in these static drills where he's back to the baseline. But you're square to the person, not the angles of the court. Okay, shade right. What would shade right be? So which is your right hand? All shade right, that's my right. The one with the L is the left. That's what we always make sure. L was left, so it must be this one. I'm splitting this hip. Now when I shade someone right on defense, which way is your advantage to dribble, right or left? Right, so when I know and I shade right, I'm probably giving them more of a right hand. I'm anticipating them dribbling right. So most times we would play what? Shade left, because I'm more likely to want you to go left. Show me shade right first. And again, on the wing, you can see he's splitting. Show me shade left. Split that foot, or hip, guard the hip. Very good. Let's go back to shade right. Now, the next one is influence. And influence right, especially here on the sideline, is what we want. Uh, I'll show you in the middle first. So influence right, there's shade. All I'm doing is this foot stays in, but I'm now guarding on a 45. That's influence. So it's even more making you go that way. But as you can see here on the wing, show me influence. His feet are parallel there, and he's really now trying to force down to there, to that corner, right? So that's what we play a lot on the wings, our influence, okay? The last one is force, force, let me be. So if I was force right, I'm teeing him up. I'm really teeing him up, and the only option he has to do is dribble with his right hand. This is mostly forcing him into a trap, force him into a ball screen, something like that. Okay, or downing a trap on a pick, we'll show that later. But if I played force here, the problem with force right now is you still have a straight line, don't you? So we've got to be careful to give him that straight line. But the players have to know what position they need to be on defense. And to me, I need a language so I can coach on the fly. Right? So I need to say, Brendan, shade right, shade right next time, shade him, shade him. Instead of time out, get over here, sub, you gotta coach them on the fly. And if you have a vocabulary, you can do that. We also have a vocabulary for the distance. Show me sag, what do you think would sag? Sag, show me hand pressure, body pressure. And then we would actually have sometimes it's bump. Bump would be this, you're just actually, right? You're just trying to actually muscle with them and actually drive them off his line, but showing your hands. Okay, so again, we have that sort of thing. So you've got to be able to have that. The biggest issue I have with this is with our age group teams, especially, and it happens with the seniors, and I even see with the best teams in the world, the US, Spain, us, Australia, you cannot get beat straight and strong late in a shot clock. You cannot get beat straight and strong. So, Chisholm has the ball. Shot clock's down to four seconds. What do you got to anticipate? And you're not going to give him. He's not a, a drive which way? A drive right. You cannot, you're right-handed, aren't you, Chisholm? You can't let Chisholm just go right for a layup. That's what we mean by straight. He went straight to the basket with his strong hand. And you see it all the time. You also see it a lot in the fourth quarter when your team is up and the other team is making a run. What, they, what, what is the other team going to do? Put their head down and go to the basket. We played Australia last year in, in the FIBA America Cup. We were up, I can't remember the exact number, but they, they went on a, an incredible run in the fourth quarter and it was all basically straight and strong drives. They just put their head down and drove the basket. Now, it also had a fact that we were in Argentina, playing Argentina, with a crowd that really wanted Argentina to win and the referees, I'm not saying the referees are cheating, but I'm just saying that they get excited by what's happening, right? They, it's that, but that's, that's not, it's, that's just the way, nature of the game too, okay? But we were allowing them to go straight and strong. So we have to be sure we're working on that. Now, here's the next thing we're gonna work on. We're gonna work on short cutoffs and long cutoffs. I'll demo first. A short cutoff is, I'm in, your name is? Miguel, I'm anticipating that Miguel likes to go right. I have to have a plan on defense. I know you, you're going right. So when he tries to go right, 
I'm hopping, I'm pushing hard, and I'm taking them on the chest. I have to show my hands. A point of emphasis here, there's no point, you cannot push him off his line. You must show your hands. And I'm anticipating, so boom, that's a short cutoff. I've anticipated and I'm driving hard with that push from that other leg, okay? A long cutoff is he starts to beat me, no slow kid, I'm an old guy, and I have to hip turn and I've got to take the shortcut to grandma's house. Like, he, he's a little red riding hood, I can't go on the same path. I have to take the shortcut and I know that grandma's house is right down here, keep driving, and I have to pick a spot and now I've got to cut him off. And it is a sprint, it is not a slide. Where players get in trouble is, they start with the, long, the short cutoff, and he keeps going, and then they try to keep sliding. And they're on the same path to grandma's house, right? You've got to beat them there. So here's the drill we're going to work on. Spread yourselves out. We're going to start, the defenders guys are going to have their hands on the ball like this. Offense will go like that. We're both going to do hip turns, same time. When I say go, he's putting the ball down on the floor going right, hard for one dribble. What am I doing? I'm trying to do a short cutoff to cut him off, and that's we stop. Okay, so you're driving right, offense going hard right, defense working on a quick short cutoff. Ready? Hold, 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 we got a problem. That's all right. Can't play with a flat ball. You ready? Hands on top. Now, good hip hinges. Ready, go, hip turns. Go! Okay, good. Just get that handle. Don't get caught. Show me both hands. Okay, this time we're going left. This time we're going left. Ready, go. Go! Good. Okay, so again, we're just working on that first explosive cutoff. Okay, that's what we're working on. Why am I doing hip turns? Well, it's a little more dynamic, and it's a thing they have to be able to do in defense and offense, that ability to quickly turn their feet. Okay, now we're going to try the long cutoff. We're going right. Take a peek and think where Grandma's house is. Show me where your Grandma's house is. Where's your Grandma's house? Probably down, see that, that little check mark? Right there. Where's your Grandma's house going to be? Somewhere's down in here. You're going to try to cut him off. Where's your grandma's house? No, you're, he's going right. You're probably trying to grandma. Somewhere's in here. Okay? You ready? Here we go. Let's try it. You're hip turning, sprinting. Ready? Go. Hip turn. Go. Good. Okay? So we'd work on some long cutoffs. Now, then we would go where we're not saying right and left and we've got to have a plan that's live. I'm not going to show that one. But the one we do work on is combining the two. So, Miguel, I want you to go for a long a drive. You're doing a long cutoff. Let's go slow. It's a long cutoff. Get to Grandma's house. Cut them off. You, you're a smart player. You're going to try now to attack middle. Short cutoff. So he's got to put together a long twist, quick short. Because that's what happens a lot. Okay, we'll just demo with them right now. Okay, your name again is... Okay, so ready? Do your hip turns. You're going hard and then change direction. Go! Cut them off, cut them off. That's it. Hands up. Good. So it's that now starting to combine long and short cutoff. And it, these are what I call ED drills, ED, every day. Every day we have to have shooting and every day we have to have something that involves me guarding the ball. Okay? The other one I think is important for me guarding the ball is now maybe for our forwards. Uh, come on down here. And you do defense, offense. Yeah, your name again is? Any. Any. Any has the ball. We'll just show this one. I have to, again, be able to understand how to guard in close here with my back to the basket. Let me do you first. I have to know positioning-wise, right-handed, and he wants to turn over his left shoulder to score 99.9% .9 of the time. See what? He wants that. That's what he wants. So I have to know that my left side is dangerous, and I have to play more to a shade, an influence, or I might even be in a force. Same thing from behind. I don't want to be caught square, turn, because he, 
on B. So again, I have to know. The difference down here is I've got to have my hands up. Okay, so when he turns, I'm anticipating. He turns now. If he continues to go, I have to learn to challenge with this hand. Not with this hand. Because I'm crossing my body and I'll get off balance. So I gotta learn a challenge with this hand. Now, turn and turn face to shoot. I challenge. Now, if he tries to cross back the other way, which hand do I gotta challenge with? This hand. Okay, so I've got to learn how to, without fouling, test. So let's just start here. I just want you to turn and try to shoot. If you don't have it, turn, come back for a shot that way. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go right there. Ah, no dribble. Score with your feet. Score with your feet. Turn it if he's there. Good. That, do not think that that is a natural thing that it will do. And if you have a tall player, first of all, you have a young female player who's probably over six foot, six foot one, and, great, and she's 12 years old, uh, just come down here after, and you can fill out, and I'll love to talk to you. Okay? Because they are very rare and special. At the World Championships, there was five all-stars. The most valuable player was six foot four from the U.S., Brianna Stewart. Second player was Cambridge, six eight from Australia. Third player was Misselman, six four from Belgium, and the fourth one's Nador, six five from uh, Spain. Tall players dominate at the highest level in the women's game, and I think in the men's game they do too. But one of the things we sometimes do is. We don't give them a confidence to be on the floor because we don't teach them specific things. But if you have a tall girl, just what I showed there, if she can just learn to do that on defense, contest with this hand, contest with that hand, and know that the other girl likes to turn to their left side, she will dominate the game defensively because she can control people not being able to score at the basket. Okay? And then the next thing I would teach her is how to block shots as a help defender. And what we would do there, I have the ball, let's go with the help defender, uh, name again is Brendan, go with the offensive player, defensive player to help. I'm driving in, you're going to leave me, which hand are you going to block this with? Which hand would you block this shot with? Why that hand? Aren't you right handed? Yeah. Well, won't you want to swat this thing out of bounds and everything is going to pump your chest when everybody goes crazy? Why would you block it with that hand? What happens when you block this shot, where does it go? Actually, it's going to go right there. Who's going to get it? You or your teammate? And actually, if you're real good, you're going to block it and catch it. So we want to block with this hand. So all it is is, and what you want to do is you're not reaching for the ball. You're blocking the spot that the ball has to go through to get to the basket. That's what you're trying to do. Pick the spot. So be a help defender. As I'm dribbling in, oh, you got, look, I know I'm old and short, but you're still going to have to jump. Okay? So when I jump, you've got to jump. Okay? Now, if I went with this side, which hand are you going to block with? Be on that side, Brendan. Which hand? You block with that hand. Okay? So a good way to practice this, Brendan, come up here with the ball. You're going to drive down here. Go to shoot. That, that hand contest. Then I'm going to cross over here, try to shoot with this hand. You've got to block with that hand. Ready? Well, on the one of them you're going to try to score, the second one. But you're working to contest, to drive to the S, spin or change to go to that side. Ready? Here we go. Okay? Good. And it's working on offense because the spin dribble is an effective move now because of the 0 1 2. In the old rules, 0 1 couldn't do anything. Now I can go 0 1 2. So spin dribbling, big time. So that's a great little drill to practice with taller players, so learning to contest. Now, it's not. Smaller players can do it, too. The smaller players, we work more on low hand blocks, learning to low hand block. So Miguel, right here, Paul. Paul has the ball. You're driving, Paul. He's driving. Guarantee you he's been taught hand the ball, ball to hand, all that good stuff that Kirby taught, which is still good stuff. But as higher levels, you start to figure it out. And you know that he's always going to pull the ball through here to shoot. So as he goes to shoot, what you're going to do is you're going to go with this hand. Go to shoot, don't go do your layup. 
If you go to his left, go to your left. That's, and that's a good thing to do. That small guy's got to stick together. And it frustrates the big guy because they've been taught their whole life to do all this in through here. And all you do is put your hand down low, low hand block. Okay, so that's, that's an effective little thing that disrupts. Okay, so just kind of give you some ideas that you've got to be putting those things in. So you're you're working on shooting, you're working on defending, and again, with tall players especially, don't do everything exactly the same. They need some special things that give them confidence. Okay, give them confidence. We used to talk a lot about the global player, and I would say it learn to train, all for that. As they get into train to train, especially into train to compete, we now talk more about a position with global skills. You need to have global skills at a position you play. Right? I'm going to be honest, Miguel is probably not going to be a center or a post or a forward. Probably not. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time with him on, on skills that he's not going to need in the game. Whereas maybe uh, Brendan, he's not going to be a point guard. Well, I'm not going to spend as much time on every single point guard skill with him, but he's still going to get to work on dribbling, passing, and doing those sorts of things, but just not the same amount of time. To me, as, as, as long as I can do it without lunging. And I also got to know what the officials are calling, but you can, that, as you learn, and you do, players do this, and they're really doing this. Now, when players are a little smart and they're learning to pull it off their side, or they pick, no, you can't, you're not going to get away with that. But I got five fouls. If you're playing at a high level, you don't use your fouls. Like a player says, hey, another game, I had no fouls. So we couldn't have played much defense today. Like, I'm sorry. They're there for a reason. And part of it is to be disruptive. That stuff that Tanya's trying to show, that's good stuff. Because you need to generate offense out of your defense. You, it is too hard to score consistently against good five-on-five -five defense, especially as you go up the ladder. So you need to do things that are disruptive. To create those about six possessions a game, that's it. Six possessions a game that we can turn into an easy basket. And they can change the game around change the game around, okay? But you're right, if they're lunging and reaching, yes. And if they're calling it, scout, okay. Just have enough smarts, say, nope, not doing that anymore, okay? So, have a seat, guys. So that was just a couple things on, on that. Give me uh, five guys in white, five guys in red. Five on white, five in red. One ball, one ball. And your name is? No one. No one? No one. No one. No. Offense here. Match up here, guys. We're going this way, white's going this way, red's going that way. Now you're playing five on five, five on five. I just want to see how they play. Then we're going to talk about some things. Uh, safety, guys, get that ball there, Paul. My ball. White's going this way, red's going this way. Play, play. Okay, I've seen enough. Okay, come on in. Saw exactly what I knew I was going to see. Here's my question. I'll ask the players, and coaches, you can think of a question. On which side of the floor did both teams initiate their offense? Right side. And in both situations, where did the ball, where did they first start to attack? From what position on the floor? What position on the right side? The wing. So here we had a dribble move from the wing. There we had a pass to the wing. Would you agree? In both situations, as soon as the person caught the ball, what did they do? Dribble. That's how our game is evolving. And it's not good. Okay? Because we've developed some bad habits from this. And where we as coaches sometimes is, I always like to say there's three things that you can do as a coach. You can try to improve the things you're doing. You can innovate by doing some new things. Or you got to change people and <laughs> change. So like at a high level, do I cut people or do I try to grow them? And what's happened is, I think, is we're allowing players to self-organize into a style of play that works say, maybe at a train to train, but if they keep doing the same thing at a train to compete, it doesn't work. 
and they ingrained in these habits that hurt their development and growth. So if every time I catch the ball, I dribble with my right hand, that's going to hurt you if you try to play university ball or even good high school ball. Okay? If we always enter to the right side, what does the other team start to know? Yeah, they start really denying that. It's like I'm an old football coach. If my sweep right was my best play, but if I ran it every single time, I'd beat the bad team, but the good teams, I don't beat them. I have to sometimes run left. I sometimes have to pass the ball. Some, well, it's the same in basketball. We have to mix up where we enter and the actions that we run. Here's what I'm seeing happen. Uh, go in the corner, please. Give me a four at one in red, four at one in. White matchup. Red's on defense or offense down here, white matchup. Four at one in. How many people play a four at one in kind of offense? How many people play a five out? Okay, very common at younger ages, and it's a good, it's a good spacing. No, you're, you're in the corner, ball's right here. What's that? We'll show it right here. Ball's here, you're in the corner on offense. So, here's the spots on the floor we talk about. Swing. The swing is the foul lane extended. This is the swing spot. The wing is the foul line extended. Corner is where the you're straight in line with the rim. I've got to be aware, I'll get the buzz feedback there. Okay, other swing, corner, high post, show me low post, show me short corner. Oh, I've got to talk to Coach Dan, that's good, that's good. Show me the top, where's the top? Top is right, actually right here, where's the nail? It's right at the foul line, middle of the foul line, okay? So we give them those spots. Now, some new spots that we're playing out of now are the angle is right through here, the 45. This is a very good spot to run some of those two-player actions that I talked about, some of the screen actions. Okay? And what we've done a good job of, and Renato, I remember being here with Renato, oh my goodness, that's going on about 10 years now, and we talk about double gaps, single gaps. How many people under have heard about double gaps and single gaps? It's very good. So this is a double gap. And we want to either blast cut or penetrate to the single gap or double gap. Come up to the wing. This is a single gap. We don't want to be penetrating in there because it's easy to help and recover and it's hard to drive in there. Okay, go back to your double gap. Here's what's happening a lot in the game. I was at nationals and I watch all kinds of games. A lot of times this player is coming down and just penetrating because they're good at penetration off the dribble with the right hand. And, but here's how a lot of coaches are now playing on defense. And I totally get it. They're playing a sag. Pack line. How many people play a sag or pack line with this player? Because this player is not a great shooter. And if they shoot the first shot, they're like, okay, we'll live with that. Internationally, they're making that shot, but they're still put people doing this. So here's what is, what's starting to happen. Penetrating. No rotation has to happen. It's an easy pass because it's in his vision, pass. The worst thing is if he just backs up there. Back out. Beat your guy baseline. He close up big. Pass there. Oh, no, stay with three, three, pass there. Pass. Where's our little rotation? Pass. Oh, the three. Oh, the three. Pass. Pass goes here. Straight line pass. That's how many people do that? You hit the drift, pass. Drive middle. Drive with your right hand. Now, if he doesn't step out of bounds first, because a lot of people step out of bounds over here in that sh corner, drive in here, help, pass, drive with your right hand again, pass, drive with your right hand again, pass, drive with your right hand again, no, no, use your right hand, you can't go left, use your right, so that's what, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but that's what I'm starting to see happen. Okay, and defense, is sagging. So here's the problems with this. The biggest problem is every time a player drives, most of their passes go where? In something that's in their vision right there. They're not learning to see these passes and how to make those passes. The second thing is, are people off the ball or standing still all the time? So we're penetrating and always passing to a stationary player. And what we haven't learned to do is how to pass to a cutter in the key. How to pass to the big inside. We're just learning penetrate, pass to the next outside player. Okay. 
and it's all done usually with penetration off the right hand. So a couple things that we need to work on and we're starting to see happen. First of all, we want to cut against this guy. And you see this in the NBA a lot. So as he starts to penetrate, if he's staring at the ball, you're cutting. And we want to make that pass. Now, he has to know, though, he may not be the scorer, and he has to be able to make the next pass sometimes. Anticipate that there's rotation and help. But we want to make that cut. Okay? There are some teams that are actually face-cutting that. They're actually cutting across the face. of This, this player's down here, and help, they just cut right across his face because not, they're not paying attention. Okay, back again. Here's the next big one. Go low post optics, Brendan. Who's my low eye help? Who's my low eye? Low eye, high eye. You're kind of, you're kind of be the help, the helper. Now, if you have a forward inside, let's have the ball here. On this penetration, or let's say it even came from the wing, up here on the wing, and we have this drive. Start, go slow. The classic rotation, help, drop, rotate, you take him, drop, rotate, peel off, you take him. That's what a lot of teams are doing, or they're xing out, but, and what happens is, he stops, and then he's supposed to pivot, and he's supposed to kick out, but everything's matched up. Because we really had no movement on the offense, and we're allowing the defense to rotate, and they know exactly where you're standing, and they get the rotation every time. We have to start to think about putting cutters into our penetration principles. So let's go slow, back up here. The first thing is, if you're a forward, if you're a forward and you think that there might be a drive from over there, more up to the wing now, up to the wing, ball on the wing, right there. We want you to lift. Why would we want you up here? Or what does it do to you? Are you the help? You're the out low eye. Is it a little more difficult if I'm up here? I got, I got some options, don't I? Okay, start your drive. Now, where do you think I'm going to go? I'm coming down here. If I'm, if I'm at the high male level, where am I going? I'm going right there. I'm dunking that. And there's no way a drop. Now, if you come to get me, if you come to take this on, this really opens up. And we're probably cutting you, too. We're probably cutting, cutting him. So let's go slow with this. Okay, so we make our last cut pass. Attack and drive. Freeze. Brennan's coming here. Cut. There, and you dive. Okay, we're attacking the rim. We're attacking the rim. You just play off space up here. Okay, now, so we're getting some cutting action. Now, let's say our forward was up in here, though. Brennan was up in here. Stay out there. Give me my high eye, low eye. You'd be low eye. Defense, high eye right here. Attack on the dribble, or we make our pass. Go baseline, freeze. See, again, if we allow just him to go, rotate, they've got us. So we need to get some cutting action to break down the high eye, low eye. Back again on the wing. Now we can cut either guy. The first thing we can do, go slow, drive, is you slash into the here. Because he, if he, and now you're ducking and diving, we call it. Okay? So we're really putting pressure on this rotation. Or, back again, if this is more of a forward type especially, I don't care what country it is in the world, drive, low eye help, as soon as he, soon as he drops, as soon as he drops, you beat this guy right down through here. As soon as you see the drop. And that can be a, a position or that can be a person. So, but we really want to start looking at getting cutters against penetration instead of just standing still where the defense can rotate and match up. And I think you can do that with younger players. I know I'm doing it with my, my, my age group team. And you're getting that cutter. Even if they don't hit the cutter, it causes a lot more confusion to the defense and we get a whole lot more offensive rebounds. The next thing is, let's give the ball here again. And your name is? What is it? Worst drives. Let's go up a little higher. 
Here comes the low I. We want to work on beating this low I defender. We either want to snake, back again worse, we want to snake it. What's a snake dribble? You know what a snake dribble? Get, cob him, so I'm going to be you. So I want to, as he's on me, I want to try to get him on my back and cob, come through here. Now I've beaten two guys, and you're, you're like, I'm just throwing that up there, right? So we can snake it, back again. So we got to work on cobbing and snaking. Go slow. So you've caught the ball, Juarez. He's going to snake him through the middle. Now we're in trouble. Or we can Gretzky or Nash, which is we're just going to keep the ball and go baseline. So ball's here, Juarez. Ball's here. Play a little tighter on his top. You get beat. So now, freeze. Nash or Gretzky. See this space from here to here? That's a meter. That's the highway, I call it. In Toronto, I can call it, that's the collector lanes in Toronto. Okay, in Toronto, they have the expressway, then the collectors. So if you snake it, you're taking the expressway, that's the collector lane. Okay, you can use either one. So we're going to use the collector lane. So you're going to go. Here comes the help. He's high. Use the collector lane. Ah, oh, down here. Look at the collector. Look at this big knife. Oh, freeze. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right here. You're trying to get someone else to score. Look at the size of these guys. You're not scoring against them. But you got, where's my guy at the front of the rim? Right there, someone behind, you got there. This pass right here, there's these little windows where you can get that pass. That's a really effective pass. So these circle actions with the forward inside. Okay? I'm not going to do a whole lot of drills in it. I'm just trying to show you some things, and I think you'll see as we go along where they fit. I'm just challenging you to think about, are you getting movement in your penetration principle? Now, you guys can have a seat. Have a seat. The next thing is, is how we used to teach dynamic one-on-one. Give me uh, two guys up who haven't been up yet. Two guys that haven't been up yet. One up. Who else? That's all right. Ball in the corner. And your name again is Paven and Miguel. Miguel, you are on the A. You're on the three-point on the baseline. Both of you are on the baseline. Oh, the Step out of bounds. This is old Renato stuff. Still good stuff. I used to stand here as a coach. We'll use the inside three. Pass to me. You've got to come tag my hand. You're coming for the ball. Go ahead. And now that we're working on, working on our dynamic one-on-one, so you're crossover and attack baseline. Anybody remember these old Renato drills? We would have done them, and you guys have probably done. They're good drills for teaching the footwork and teaching advantage but there's not teaching a decision. There's no decision in this. The second problem with these type of drills was, let's go back again. He was being taught to put the ball on the floor every single time. Right? Every single time you put the ball on the floor. And if we did this was our only way we taught dynamic one-on-one, -on -one, why would he not, when we start to play, put the ball every time he caught it? And so we have to come up with ways and make sure that the drills we do don't create some habits. The other bad habit was pass. Won't tag my hand again. Freeze. Hold up. Right here. His first dribble, he wasn't learning to what we call cob this player. Is everybody familiar with the term cob? You guys should know. What does it mean? Keep on back or keep on body. So what was happening was he's learning to dribble really with no contact at first. Instead of what he should be working on is his first dribble is getting that shoulder pass and just going through, I call it with the little players, go through the branches of the tree. I've got to learn to go through the branches of the tree and not but avoid the trunk. But I can't go, oh, put your branches out. I can't go around the branches because what's that, remember what we just worked on? That gives you a shortcut to grandma's house, right? If I go around the branches, the wolf's taking the shortcut. It's going to meet me, meet me there. So, so we had problems with this. The other one, we only ever used to do this off the right side of the floor or, or on the guard to wing. We didn't do it in enough other spots, so players always thought that everything had to be done on the wings, guard wing stuff. So it's not that these aren't bad drills, but you've got to make sure there's some other drills where they're going to get the decision-making and the cobbing. I'm going to show you a couple ways that we're now teaching this a little bit. 
start there in the corner. I'll be you, Mabelle, and you can demo. Starting in the corner again, in the offense, in the corner, right on the court, on the court. Where's the corner? Guys, where did we say the corner was? In line with what? In line with the basket. Yeah, so step on the court. In line with the basket and where the three-point line is straight. That's what we call the corner position. I'm at the wing. You're going to pass me the ball. Pass me the ball. Now, this is actually when we do our two-player action. He's working on a get. A get. But he's also, we're going to work to play one-on-one. -on -one with so, start to cut. If I hold the ball in this foot, do a little hockey stop, and you're ending up right there. Where's your advantage? You're going to do your twist crossover and attack. Now he gets to work on what? Cobbing me. And he's going against a real body. And as soon as he goes, I can now be a live defender. And we're playing, and I'm working on my cutoff, maybe my low hand block, whatever. We're working and playing live one-on-one. -on -one. Back again. I'll go fast on these. If he passes to me, and I hold it over this foot, so this is his curl. You're going to attack the middle. Attack the middle. And again, I got a hip turn, and we're playing one on one. Okay, back again. See how, how good he is. Here we go. Be ready now. He comes. Back door. I've denied you. Go back door. And I'll make the pass to you. And then I chase him. So do that one again. So if you're denied, go back door. Follow me. Oh, start with the pass. Good pass. Come hard, come hard, come hard. Hard cut. And then I chase you down. Okay? So that's the three options. There's two more things he can do. Back again. See how smart he is. Pass. Cut hard to that spot. No, wait to that spot again. You always cut to that spot. What would you do now? Shoot or play off the closeout. Let's try that one. You remember these reads now. You're going to have to know them. Okay. Now, here's the one that they need to practice the most. This is the one that they get most often. And yet, the one we don't practice enough. Pass. Come out. I'm in a good defensive position, and he's a passer. And he has to work on his space pivot. Coach taught you space pivots? Show me space pivot. That's right. Pivoting to me. Protect the ball. And he'd be a pivoter to pass. So those are the five things that he can do off a dynamic catch. He can cross over, he can curl, he can back cut, he can shoot or attack the closeout, or he can be a passer. Can you guys give me a live demonstration? And Miguel, you give him one of those five reads. So you be up here as me, either hand, the back door, okay? And you play live one-on-one. -on -one. Here we go. Yep, play off that. Okay, so they, they, we, now we're getting our offense and our defense. Okay. Quickly, give me two more guys. Two more guys. Help defender. Help defender. Offense. So, Miguel, you go offense this time. Paul is defense. Offense to Chisholm. Okay, so you give him one of the, the reads and then play live. Okay, either one. You can give me one. Ready? Here we go. Now we're locked. Oh, we're, oh, freeze, freeze. See, that's what I don't want him to do. I don't want you to freeze. If you had the advantage, I want you to attack dynamically. The only time you'd freeze if he has you squared up. Use your uh, dynamic advantage right away. Okay? Start do that one again. Promise you freeze the ball against good defense to help defense get set and get still. Here we go. Do the same thing there. Here we go. Use it. Whoa, whoa, freeze, freeze. Oh, where was your advantage? Back again. This is where the decision is. When you caught that ball, where's your advantage? That's your advantage. You went back to where he had his half of his body. So use that left hand. Let's go again. Good job. Use your left hand. Here we go. Attack. Attack. Now we're playing off. Oh, freeze. What are you going to do? See, see, he was just standing there. So is he going to slide? Is he going to cut? Now we're building in, attacking the help defender. And this is how we start to load in our penetration principles. Give me another two guys. Another two guys. Give me three guys in white, though. Three guys in white. Three guys in white. 
Three guys, just three guys in red, though. Give me three guys in red. I want three on three, three on three, quickly. Okay, so, yeah, you're off work, yeah. We all get three. Miguel, you're right here. You hold the ball. We'll start the same. Let's do it from a different spot, just so coaches you see. You start right here on defense. No, nope, start here. We're going to do it from a different spot. Uh, let's put you in the corner. Corner. I need space now. Okay? Now, pass, and you're going to give him one of those reads. Let's do this read for now. You're going to hold it. Where's your advantage when you catch this one? Now it's back this way. Now, this is where you are. Oh, you better do what I hope you're going to do. Okay? Let's go. Let's start live here. So again, we're, we're working off different spots. This is how we build in our penetration principle and our dynamic one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, now freeze, freeze. I don't want him to freeze that cut. You go. You go. Okay, let's go slow. So you attack, cut hard. Now, you might get him over there. Now, you hold, come into here. Now, this is where, can you snake this? Can you attack? Or are you going to pivot out? Were you going to be a cutter or are you going to fill behind? Do you understand? Okay, I'm just showing these things, but that's how we start to lay in the, the penetration principle. This is what we call our explore offense. This is not a set. This is when we have advantages. So anytime we create advantages off the dynamic catch, we're just playing penetrate, kick, attack. It's not a set offense. It is the foundation of our entire offense. And we have to have players understand when that happens. Okay? The next part would be to add in the transition. We would say three, you go down and back. Then we load in offensive transition, defensive transition. And that's how we basically load up the game. Okay? What I'm going to work on, Adam, is that my time that I have till I'm done? Okay, good. I'll go over the book. So what I want to do next is, is show how we start to work on the two-player game and the three-player game when we have to execute. On what I call the two-player game. And this is what I think is, hap as I said in the game, we've allowed the game to be played all in explore, where we allow players just come down and play penetrate kick, always dribble attack, dynamic. But once they're neutralized and the defense matches up, sometimes we're dribbling when we don't have an advantage. And we need to run actions to create advantages. There's three two-player actions that we're going to talk about. Pick, get, and handoff. And I think you can start to introduce these even at a learn to train stage. I'm going to show a drill that we use to practice the pick. Normally, I would start right away with two on two. I think yesterday I did a little bit of a two on one shooting with a pick in it. That, did I do that yesterday? I'm not seeing any nods. Maybe I didn't. I think I did. This is where we play two on two a little bit. I say, you know what? We've got to go polish up some of the skills. So it's a continuous drill, and I can show you a couple of loads of it. So NA is in the middle. We got balls on the wing, and I got two defenders, permanent defenders, who we just switch out eventually. But they're getting to work on being a good defender. NA, you're going to give the signal for a pick and connect with Paul and tell him you're setting a pick. Go set the pick. Oh, it's got to be a verbal too. What do you say? Paul, Paul, let him know. Now, freeze. A good pick. We're doing a good take on, protecting yourself, not too wide, so it's illegal. Paul, you've got to set this pick up with a jab away. You've got to set him, take him down. Good. Now, your name is? Noah. Noah. Noah is working on, in this first drill, he's working on getting into the pick, or into the, or the dribbler. Get into him, and you're trying to get over that pick. But we're going to chase a little bit. Don't, that would be a little bit. Don't you let him do that. Jab him down. Okay? Now, Take him, and you get up over it. Now, oh, you can't foul him. Chase him. Don't leave with that leg. I want you to chase him. Get on his hip. You're like a little train. Chase the train. Chase him. Chase him. Good. Freeze. Freeze. Now, we're working on your passing. You're working on your shooting. Now, what we're going to work on, I'm just going to show you this. It doesn't mean rolling's not available. When I set my pick, my first action is to punch this arm. Just stay still for a second, Noah. I'm punching this arm through, and I'm getting him on my back. And I am sprinting to be a shooter. In it. I'm sprinting out here to be a shooter. 
we're really stretching the defense. Okay? The pass we're working on, Paul, we're going to work on a hook pass first. You guys are paying attention over there. So here comes the pick you're guarding me. So I come off this. I'm hooking the ball to my shooter. I'm looking here. I'm using my peripheral vision. I don't want us to turn and chest pass. We have to learn to use passes on the periphery of our body. Okay, hook pass. Let's show that one. Here we go. Hook pass. Shot. Now, free. you're shooting. You stay defense on the next player here. Paul, you're now setting the pick over here. Call the name. Fake it down. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're a static person. Set him up for your jab. Pack that middle. You're sprinting out, Paul. Oh, no. That, see, Paul? Paul, that was a roll. We're working on the sprint. There's different ways you can do it. We're working on the sprint hook. So take your left arm, punch, and sprint to that corner. Sprint. Oh, back again. We'll go slow. We'll go slow. Slow down. Pick. Punch this arm through. And sprint to there. And you've got to get in towards when you're doing your hook pass. Yep, that's it. you got to let them wobble. You go to the end of the line with the ball. Pass. Go ahead, Warren. Go. Hook pass. Set the pick. Set the pick. Morris, you're setting the pick. 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 Whoa. I am very patient. Going again, Warris. We're going again. Going again. You're sprinting out. Freeze. Whoa, freeze. So you have to listen. Pay attention here. What's, it, what's the word I use? You have to do what? What's the first word? You are sprinting out. So you pick, take this shoulder, rip it through, and sprint that way. See the difference? You're not drop pivoting, you're sprinting out. Here we go. Set your pick. Whoa, back again. See, I'm going to get him. He's going to get it. We may spend another four, 43 minutes, but he's going to get this. Warris, slow down and concentrate. Sprint. Oh, go again. Now, see, you guys got to hold him to the standard, too. No. Walk through without the ball. Show me what you're going to do. No. I'll, you watch me. Again, I'm setting the pick. I'm punching and I'm sprinting and looking this way. See, you got it. You got it. Here we go. Here we go. Excellent. There you go. Shot. Who's setting the pick? Who's setting the pick? Next pick. Ready? Any, you're setting the pick. You're at the end of the line over here. Go set the pick. Here we go. Hook pass. Good. Who's setting the next pick? Chisholm. Good. Hook pass. Who's setting the next pick? Here we go. Set the pick. Excellent, Juarez. Good job. Way to roll. Sprint out. Sprint out. Sprint out. Good. And stop. Coaches, you get the idea? And I am patient. We are getting the detail. That's why we're doing an, an on-air type drill is to work on form and speed. This is not a decision. This is working on form. That's why I do this kind of drill. It's not a decision. I can load a decision later. Now, set it up again. Now, the next pass we're going to work on, offense is doing the same thing. Set it up. Who's my picker? Screen. No, a screen is off the ball. A pick is on the ball. You guys chisel and move down there so the coaches can see a little better. So, come set the pick. Call the name. Freeze. Set the good pick. Protect yourself. Attack. Freeze. Oh, we're going here. No snake yet. No snake yet. Really got to, what they really have to work on is stretching the floor. What we're going to work on now is a little banana roll. So here's what my offensive picker is doing. I set the pick. Pick coming. Pick. I'm bananaing to a little roll here. A little banana cut. Because I know there's probably a tag defender going to help. So find that little pocket. And we're working on the pocket pass. So set the pick for me. I jab him down. Now remember, you're going to sprint that arm through. Show me what you're going to do. Sprint, and then that little banana run. That's right, a little more of a curl. Ready? Back again. So when I jab him down, I'm coming here, and I'm pocket passing. So a little snap across my hips. Again, I'm not looking there. I'm just snapping my pocket pass. 
Okay, guys, you got it? We're running banana curls, pocket pass. Here we go, pick. Pocket pass, good. Who sets the next pick? Who sets the next pick? Here we go. Jab him down, Paul. Pocket pass, pocket pass, good. Next pick, next pick. Next pick, good. Next pick. Next pick. Next pick, Doris. Doris, pick, pick, pick. Pocket pass, good. No, nice. And got it. So this is where I'm introducing again. Different types of passes, different types of rolls. Straight out. Give me two more whites. Two more whites. Guys, hold those balls. Get in line. Get in line. You'll get to compete here in a second. Now, give me a, one defender on the picker. Sub on the baseline. You, you guys just keep subbing through to the defender on the picker. So now we're loading in a little more of a decision. So you've got to decide, am I going to use a pocket pass or a hook pass? Because there's going to be a help. Now, I want you to be a flat hedge. You know what a flat hedge defender is? You just extend up. Okay, so set your pick. Set the pick, flat hedge, okay, and now set the next pick, switch, switch, here we go, set the pick, good, shot, next pick, where's my defender, oh, now see, see what he did, he turned his chest to pass, stretch this guy further, take this guy further, and there'll be a window there, because remember, they're not switching, He's extending, and he's chasing you. He's chasing you. The further you take this guy, the more open Chisholm is. Okay, try that again. So now they're getting to work this a little more with a live defense. Here we go. Hook that. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to let you do that. Hook that with that left hand. Because what I want him doing is freezing this tag defender. Come in and see the tag. You go up and grab the pick. There's going to be a guy who's ready to rotate to help on the roller. And if you stare, he knows exactly what you're doing. But if you have your eyes at the rim, he's frozen. Because this guy's ready to rotate. So you want to freeze him. Okay. Coaches, you get the idea? Then we would go play. But I, I would always play pick and roll. Then we would do that to work on some concepts that we want to work on. There's a thousand things we can do off pick and roll. I'm just giving you an idea of some of the simple things. And this is good for train to train. They can start to do this. Okay. Now, you guys take a seat. White team's up. Let's go, White. You're up now. White, right here, with the, with the balls. No balls, no balls. Now, if this was learn to train, I probably wouldn't do this learn to train, but train to train, Everybody plays every position. I'm now going to say this is trained to compete. I'm now working more on a global positioning. Or sorry, a, no, an actual position. So I just want the forwards. Who are the forwards here? No, forwards for me are guys who set picks. Wings and guards. I want my wings and guards there. Coming in the middle, Chisholm. These are the wings and guards. This is the forward line. Okay? Give me a red player here, a guard wing defender, guard wing defender. Now, we're working on dribble handoff. Go to the corner. Corner, guys, corner. Nope, not yet. Eventually, you just wait, I'll get you up in a sec. So, our forward has popped out and got the ball. The person guarding him has no advantage to beat them. We're going to use a dribble handoff as our two player action. There's, a, again, a number of different ways. We're going to work on what I call a dribble pitch. And it mostly works, play more of a sag, penetrate kick defense like that. So you're going to attack, I'll demo. I'm going to be dribbling at the defender, you're blast cutting, and I'm going to pitch it to you early and then stop for my pick. And now you do the same thing, we just, I just showed them, I'm working on my sprint out of this. You're working on, you're coming off this, you're working on your shot right now, off the dribble or stop behind. You just keep guarding that spot. You just guard that spot the whole time. Ready? Here we go. Dribble hand up. Pitch it early. Pick. Shot. I think you may need to dribble. Okay. You get your rebound. Go to the end of the line. 
Switch sides, wings, switch sides. You're going that way. Here we go. Pitch it early, pitch it early. Come to a stop. Shot. Get your own rebound or get the rebound. Good. Switch sides. Going this way. Here we go. Dribble hand off. Okay, now I would make the decision. I would have maybe dribbled it a little to the middle. Here we go. Well, you got to read it now. Read it. Good. Yes. Now, I could start this where there is actually the decision. Should I shoot it taking the hand off or should I pass it? So I could go right to competing it or I could make, make that's like a two on one shooting or I could script it and say you're working on this exact thing. That's my choice and what I think I need to work on. Okay. And again, there's lots of different options we could work on. Let's just do this one one time. We're doing our fake, we're practicing our fake dribble handoff. So I'm coming here, come for the ball. I fake a little, a little hezzy, just a little hezzy. Don't put your hand under it, but keep your dribble and go. He stays with that. Little fake pitch. Here we go. Oh, yes. Here we go this way. Fake pitch. Right ready. He's going to fake you now. Yes. Go on this side. Fake. Fake your fake pitch. Okay. This way. Fake pitch. Oh, okay. And stop. Now, give me another red defender. Another red defender. She's in the guard here. Now we're doing it two on two live. So we're just alternating. You guys are on the picture. Hand out. This is the live two on two pitch or pitch hand. Here we go. Play. And freeze. Give me one of the smaller guys. Come on up here. Here we go. Give me one smaller guy. Now, right here. Name again is David. Right there, guard. A lot of teams run handoffs to create mismatches. Switch this. Go again. No, no. You're not in. You guard here. You're in sub. Chizzy, you stay down there for sub. Just want to demo this. Go. Switch. Uh-oh. Is there mismatches? Yes. Now, at the highest level, this is what a lot of offense is all about. You run act, two-player actions or three-player to create mismatches. But now, can you take advantage of it? So in other words, can you post up and get it to him? Can you defend a post if you get a switch? Or maybe you can blow by him because he's slow. Okay? So a lot of it is working with your players sometimes and making sure little can guard bigs, bigs can guard little, helping them understand and recognize mismatches. Okay? And not just put it down with your right hand. Okay, switch back in. The last one we're going to work on. Take this line and go down under the basket, but give the balls to the wings and the guards. Now we're working on gets. Gets. Uh, no defense just yet. You sub this. I'll get you in a second. Yep. We'll keep the wing defenders up to the wing spot. Wing spot. Wing. White wing. Wing. Now, a get. And then come on out with defense. Going to pull off on that side. Low post that side. We're going to start on this side. Ball's on that side, low post there. What position would you be in defense if the ball's there? You're the low eye. Would you agree? Okay. So we want to make it look like we might be doing something to occupy him, but you're running a hard flash into this top area just above the nail. Okay. That's what you're doing. Let's go that far. So sprint to catch the ball there. Go. Free. Hold, and you want to stay in this position right here. You're locating and reading. If you had a dynamic one-on-one, -on -one, we would use it. But this is a get. You're coming for the handoff. Freeze. Here's why we like gets. Because both these players are live dribblers. So if you take it, you're live. But if he fakes it to you and you go, he's still a live dribbler. In a dribble handoff, he's not. And this is a great way to involve forwards and that they now get a chance to handle the ball. They now get a chance to play dynamic one-on-one. -on -one. They now get to do a lot of things. And it's also clearing out the basket. This is a very effective offensive action. And there's a lot of things we can do off it. So the first one we're going to work on is just we're not defending just yet. So you step out. Cut, flash, pass, run your gets. You just chase them to get, okay? And you're working on, on this one, what we're going to work on 
is you taking us and going right to a pick. You set a pick, and we play get to pick. Here we go. Start again. I'm just throwing that. We could do get and let them shoot. We could do get and whatever, but they're just going to do a get to pick. Here we go. Okay. Now, you go back and defend here. My next guy is coming from flashing up from this side. So alternate. You're coming from the opposite side for a get. Opposite side. Where's my defender? Hold it. Where's my defender over here? Right. You're my defender now. Come on. Here we go. Here's our get. Okay, coming from this side. So we should be flashing from the opposite side. Here we go. And stop. Now, I'm, I'm not doing good due diligence here. We must connect. You must tell him and give it a signal. This is the signal for a get. And you call his name. Okay, you can yell his name out. Let's go get. That's my fault. I should have been on them for get connections earlier. Here we go. Go for your get. Okay, now, let's do the next one. We're coming from this side. Really connect, Chisholm. Really connect. Here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's his name? Did you say it? Did you give me the signal? No. Then you didn't connect. Let's go. Connect. Freeze. Now, this time, the way to defend. See, I can be really working on defense, too, because I can get these two guys to really work on defending me. And then I just throw somebody else in there. So every time I can, I'm working offense and defense. The way the teams will defend us is they're going to muscle and jam him, just get up into him. Now, if he really overshows on the get, what do you think you're going to do? Back door. The other thing we can do, if he really muscles just on your hip, so here's the ball, let me be you, Brenda, is they'll just get on your hip and run with you. Keep running. But what we like them to do is reject this and then curl it. And a lot of times, you're going to be wide open on the curl. So let's do that one. We're going to curl on the get. I want to fake the get. Come hard on the curl. I take it over the top. This is very important. Take it over the top to protect. Don't keep holding here. Then I pivot, and I'll look for you. Can you do that, Chisholm? There we go. Oh, that's no, oh, where's Chisholm? Oh, there's Chisholm. And your name is? Nonso, sorry about that, Chisholm, and Nonso, I apologize. See, they corrected me. That is excellent, holding me to a high standard. Instead of letting me go the whole day thinking you were Chisholm, then saying, no, oh, that's Chisholm. Here we go. Call his name. Hold it high. Curl. There he is. Oh, what was that? Oh, man. Chisholm, I may need you to make that pass. Here we go. I'll give you another chance. Here we go. Good. Hard cut, Lawrence. Curl it, curl it, curl it. There. Okay. So there's lots of little things off that. Question? Yep. The only problem I have with the verse period, I don't see what my player's doing. I really want them to be able to know what's happening at the basket. It, and it sets up, I think, the fake a little better sometimes when I front pivot. It doesn't mean that you can't back pivot. It just... I just find it, it's, uh, the faking is better, and it's more of a natural thing to pull it I find when they go this way, they can do it, but then they, they're kind of blind to their player a little bit. Some people say, well, they're making a space, but I'd rather you have vision sometimes because you don't see it uh, quick enough. Okay? So that, that is just the way we would practice some of the decisions and reads off that. Okay? So we've got them all in. Now I need to show you just a little bit how we apply this. Give me... Uh, Let's go right to five on five. Give me five on five, quickly. Five whites on defense. I got the ball here, five reds. Don't need that ball, safely put away. One, two, three, four. I got way too many whites. One, two, three, four, five, reds. Give me a four at one end. Four at one end. Guys, we only got 25 minutes, let's go. Okay, so the ball's been driven to the basket. Go, let him go by you. He goes to the basket. Okay, circle. Circle under as he drives. Right. Now we got space over here. Two on one, make the pass. Find him. We shoot the ball. Shoot the ball. We get a rebound. Freeze. Red's got the rebound. Now we need a long safety. We need a short safety. 
We need two long bananas on offense. Two long bananas on offense. Who's my long bananas? Who's my long wing players? I need a rim runner. Rim runner, freeze. Ball's here on the rebound. Who had the rebound? Now we got our short banana right there, guard. Pass it to our guard. Freeze. We've got to make decisions right now. Right now, if we are in explore or execute. In other words, do we have an advantage? The simple rule we use, real simple is, if all the defenders, get behind the ball, in front of the ball, if all the defenders are back and matched, we are in execute. If there's a defender behind the ball, come up in front. Keep coming with the ball, boys. If, the, if we, get down the floor, get down the floor. If there's a defender down behind the ball, we can run explore because we've got somebody open. We've got to find and use them. Freeze. War is freeze. Match. Match your guy. Stay back. Where's the open guy? We got all kinds of because because there there's we have a numbers advantage. So we don't call out a set, we don't run anything. We just know we're in to find the open player. Back up, Warriors. Back up. They're all matched up. Match up. Now we got to execute. Well, we're going to execute with one of our two player actions. So we're going to signal for a pick off the angle. Where's the angle? That's there. Freeze. Now, what are all these other guys going to do? Here's my rule. It's the easiest way I teach it. If you're in the action, guys, slow down. If you're in the action, you got to play the action. If you're out of the action, get in space. Paul, where's the best space for you to go to be out of the action? Get to the wide wing. Space, space. Get to space if you're not involved in the action. But here's, your, here's the, the second part of the rule. If your player gets involved in the action, then you've got to do an action. So, Warris, start to use this pick. Come slow. Freeze. Who is involved in the action? Are you, is he involved? Your name is? Lawrence? Is Lawrence involved in the action? Yes, he is. Roll. He's the tag. So what are you going to do? What's your action going to be? Get, you're going to raise. And you've got to talk to Juarez. And tell him. Back again. Is your player involved in the action? So what are you going to do? But I may think, maybe they think that's what they want to do. Get out of here. Cut. This is one of the best actions for him. Get out of the action. Cut. And now it gives Paul or a ball handler more space. Okay, so that's it. And I, there's not an absolute, but just if your player gets involved in the action, either move in space or cut is all I'm teaching them. So let's try that. Wars back up, run your angle pick, and let's just play. Here we go. Freeze! Whoa, 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 whoa! Was your man in the action? Was your man in the action? Now, good short roll, but you guys got to be his voice and tell him for the next pass. Play again. Here we go. Keep. Freeze. Drive right basketball. Throw it to the right side, drive right. Throw to the right, 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 drive right. That's the basketball game that they want to play. Okay? And I can stand it. Good job, guys. Good job. Yeah, keep working hard. There you go. And they're just going to keep doing that. Because that's their habit, and i got to break the habit. And I have to be willing to hold them to a standard. And it is not easy. Coach, can't we just play? And that's what, that's what I say, you are just playing. There's a difference between playing and competing. Playing is when you just play with your natural habits that you have already. They're not thinking, they're just catching the dribble with the right hand. There's no thought to that. That was just what my habit makes me do. Competing means I'm using my brain space to find small advantages. Hmm, what can I do now to get an advantage? Maybe I'm going to fake right and go left. I can, and if I'm conscious, I can do that. 
My job as a coach is to make sure they know what those things they should be focusing on are. But if I let them come to practice every day and just play on habit, don't even practice. You don't even need to practice because it's just been, it's, it's already ingrained. My job is to get them what's the next thing they got to focus on and use good learning principles to ingrain that they're breaking those habits into what we need them to do. And it is not easy, especially if they have one practice a week. Right? But that's our job. That's our job. It's to find ways to help grow their game. And we should not be the reason they can't play at the next level. Right? So we've got to keep ourselves challenging to grow. I'm going to show you one last thing. I'm just going to show it. We're not going to really spend a lot of time here. That was just using a two-player action to start. Now we're going to look at a three-player action. Let's back. Let's give White the ball. White the ball, come down this way. Get into our four at one end. Give the ball to White, Morris. Give the ball to White. Give the ball to White. Going this way. Four at one end. Freeze. Again. Back again. Your name is? Rizal. So before he crosses half, he would have to be connecting and telling us we've got to execute. And this is more train to compete, but I think you can also do this at train train. We're going to start with a screen, a three-player screen action. A three-player. So we're going to involve a, a forward, a wing, and a guard. And the first one we're going to run is scrape. This is the signal. My girls call it scratch. So I like to call it scratch, scrape, scratch. So you're taking the ball to the swing. Now, when he gives the signal for scratch or scrape, echo it. What are you saying? Scrape, 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 scrape. So you go scrape, 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 scrape. A scrape cut is you're turning right here and facing that corner, and you're sprinting off, and you're picking right there. Go. Here's the scrape. Ah, too far, too far. I want you, it's a, an area screen. So I want you to be ready for a jet sometimes too. Where's the swing? Come hard. Now, you guys got to space. Get out of the action, get out of the action. Give him space. If you stand there, he can be in the action, right? So you guys have to space off there. So we're looking for this pass or the get right, or the pass to your forward there on the face up. If it goes to him, we're running a get. If it goes to here, we're running a pick. You got it? Let's run scrape. Scrape. Or scratch. Whoa, too slow. See, here's the timing. If you want to be an elite player, you should have been here calling it. And as soon as you got to half, it's, he's coming. We just wasted six seconds. And now we're running a really short shot clock. So we got to come in at speed, and that scrape cut's coming a lot faster. Here we go. Freeze! Do we get a switch? Do we get a mismatch? Well, that's the problem with younger players. There's no mismatch. But if there was a big difference, but there's no advantage, is there? Normally we pass what we do. Cut. Now we set a two-player action. So you could do a Two players are our pick, handoff, or get. Let's go to a pick. Get out of this action. Cut. Whoa, freeze! What's this? Touchdown? Was your player in the action? Get back there. Was he involved in the action? Yes, you were. You were tagging. And you're down there saying, well, why doesn't he pass me the ball? Why didn't you pass him the ball? Because you couldn't see him. And he didn't connect with you. Back down there. How can you connect with him? Get in there. But that's a double gap pass. What the coach McKay can you work on? Stealing those passes. You need to shorten that pass and lift. Sprint to lift and yell his name. Now you force a longer close out. Now we get our drive, we get our penetration principle. Let's play that a whole scrape again. Here we go. Call it early. Quicker on my scrape cut. Here we go. Play. Oh yes. Play and freeze. Okay, so we're getting some movement just by combining a three player entry with two players and teaching the other players how to stay out of the action and when to use the action. 
That's probably your, all you need on offense. You don't, can't go much deeper than that. Now, let's go this way. White has the ball. White has the ball. We're going, no, sorry, red, right? Red. Okay, Warriors, hold up. We're going to run an action. Okay, here's his signal. What's this signal for? Horns, horns. So I need two forwards. Or no, we're going to put a forward and a wing. Give me a forward and a wing. Horns start in the middle. Right in the elbows. Elbows. Who's the forward? Who's the wing? We're going to, and space, get out of the action. Get out of the action. We're going to use the wing pick first, pick for the wing, and then we're going to flare. See, this is probably the most common action at the World Championships. Horns flare. So we're going to use the shooter, come off it, screen the screener, and you're running the flare. Paul, get out of there. Give him that whole space. Just be moving. Okay? Here we go. Horns flare. Horns flare. If we don't have anything, you've got to go to a two-player game. Here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got audio visual. Audio visual. What does that mean? Say it and show it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you guys echo? Look, there's 10,000 people in the gym booing you. There's 10,000 people don't want you to win. And you've got to connect with one another. So you've got to go horns, 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 horns. Here we go. Okay, freeze, freeze. Got the switch. Back here, Wars. Did you see the switch? Where is it? Where's the mismatch? There, give it back here. Okay. Post them at the rim. Hold it now. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Is your player involved in the action? Yeah, is your player involved in the action? Then you've got to do something. What are you going to do? Well, if you go in, oh, no, back again. Back end to Warris. Warris has the ball, and he makes this look in there, and your player dives in. What are you going to do? What do you think, guys? Is that, you stepping in there, is that helping it? Oh! Oh, I like that. Why would that be good? It makes some space. It, it takes, he's got to decide, am I going to help on this screen, or am I going to be involved in the action? But you can't let him, or you might just be, let him know for a skip pass, or you might blast up through here. But you've got to do something to get him out of the action. Is your man involved in the action? What are you going to do? What would you like him to do? He, he could just space because we get the triangle pass into you. Okay? But you've got to help them with their decisions, what they need to do when their player gets involved in the game. The biggest one is they've got to talk and let people know my player's cheating and let them know that I'm open. Or they've got to cut. It's easy. Space or cut. The other thing is, this is a little more advanced, is let's say the mismatch is, let's have our big guard the guard. Let's say that we've got a switch and we've got the big on the guard. One of the best things we can do in this situation is a boomerang pass. It's just a pass and pass it right back to me. Because I guarantee you when the big is on the guard, if he makes that pass, what's the first thing your tendency to do? Pass? Are you jumping out to deny him? You're sagging back. I guarantee you, you're sagging back. You're like, oh, thank goodness he got rid of the ball. I don't have to guard him. And now we pass it back to the dynamic guard who can attack. The other thing the guard can do if he gets the big on him is just back up. And that's a signal to everybody else that what? I'm taking this guy. Okay? The problem is guards do that every single time they get the ball. And you've got to say, no, we're not doing that every single time. But there is a time when they have to learn to do that. Okay? But we also have to be able to make the pass into the big when he hits the isolation. Okay? Have a seat, guys. Thank you. So, I'm not running an, a patterned offense. What I'm doing is coming up with a three-player screening action that involves a guard, a wing, and a forward. Some of them are going to be so we can enter to the right side. Some are going to be entered to the middle of the floor. Some are going to be entered to the left side. Some could be off a dribble entry. Some could be off a pass entry. 
But two things are happening. One, my defense has to learn to do what? Guard different actions. The second thing is we're learning how to read. I, I don't want to say you always have to pass here. What I want you to do is run this, this screen and figure out what or where our advantage is. Great power in that. If there's no advantage, we need to run another action. And, it, and that's usually when I'm first teaching is, let's run another two-player action. But eventually it could be, let's run another three-player action. Let's get another screen. For me, three-player actions is screening, because usually there's somebody with a ball, two players are screening. So I call that a three-player action. Picks is two-player action. So if you want to say we're going to run our picks, handoffs, and gets, or we're going to run screens. And just keep playing until you create the advantage, and now we're into our explore. Penetrate, kick, all that stuff. That's the way the game is played. But what I'm finding is by allowing players to start to use screen actions and pick actions, it's get in the mode of always just dribbling, penetrate, kick all the time. Even, and that's their ingrained habit. And it's taking the game to a higher level for us. Okay? We have to understand the game more. We have to understand, oh, my player can be helping in action. It's forcing our defense to have to defend things besides just penetration. And if we want to grow the game as a country, we as coaches have to challenge our athletes to take the game to a higher level. Okay? I will be working on some material on this. This is like, I mean, I just got back from Spain, so I'm just starting to work on this. I hope it gave you an idea of some of the things. Uh, but I'm putting together some stuff, and hopefully all this is going to go on Game Plan, which is Canada Basketball's website for coach education. And that's where I put most of my videos. Adam does an amazing job. I mean, I want you to understand, the Basketball Manitoba website is known worldwide. I was in, in uh, Spain, and I was going to the very first game, and this guy, uh, and he's probably going to be watching this video. I know he will soon, because the first thing's probably going to happen on Monday, he says, Mike, when's the video from Basketball Manitoba going to be out? I need to watch it. But he accosted me, and he's like, you don't understand. I've watched all the videos from Basketball Manitoba. Oh, I can't believe you're here. We've got to talk. And, okay? So there's a lot of people using this website around the world to, to watch and learn. And I want to give Adam great credit for doing this clinic for years and years and putting that stuff on website. It was amazing the impact it's had around the world. Okay? And uh, sometimes we take that stuff for granted. But for a lot of countries, they don't have a lot of access to uh, coaching education or, or things like that. So we've got about seven minutes here. I, I purposely stopped to give a chance for some questions. No such thing as a bad question. I'm not sure my answers will always be the, the ones you want, but uh, I'm free to a answer any questions. Yeah. So my, my rule real with, with players, and I'll be honest, this, this happens more with the guys than the girls, Remember, I coached football for 30 years, so I'm used to coaching guys. So uh, my rule was real simple. Look, there's three roles. You can play, you can coach, or you can official. You only get to do one of them. Which one do you want? Yeah, but it... So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you want to be an official. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. You're in the wrong place, because you've got to go learn how to be an official. You've got to run a clinic next week but you can't be here because this is where the players and coaches are. Well, I want to coach. Okay, coach, go stand over there. You'll be my assistant coach now because you don't get to play. Coaches don't play. So which one do you want to be? That's how I deal with guys. I would not deal with girls that way, but with guys, because remember, here's, here's a big thing. I think I said this the other day. With, we know, in general, girls or females want to be accepted first. Then they will perform and then they'll give you some effort. Guys, effort's the first thing. They use effort to get accepted. Sorry, they use effort first, then they perform to get, or sorry, to give effort to get accepted, to, then they perform. So it's different. Okay, so you, you gotta be careful of that. Like you can't, with a, 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 a girls team like my girls team, if the first thing I do in practice is walk in and say, you gotta give me effort, we're not going hard. I'm guaranteeing, the first thing I do is let them socialize for five minutes. I'm sorry, if you haven't learned that as a coach of females, that don't fight that one, let them connect and how they, things went, don't fight that. With guys, I'm getting them involved, like you could tell, these guys want to compete, they, they need to be doing something. 
and I'm trying to do a coaching clinic, but that's not in their DNA. They want to just compete and run them down the and, and uh, okay? Which is okay, but that's just, there's some differences. Okay. So that was a long answer for that. Excellent question. So, difference in skill level or playing. One girl's played for five years, one girl's brand new. We do a lot of work, what we call IPPs, Individual Performance Plans. So, finding a time in practice where, okay, guards, you're going to go down here and work on this. Wings, you're working on this. Forwards, you're working on this. Or it might be, okay, you senior players, you're going to take this group and go work on this. I'm going to now take you two and work on some things that I really need. So tonight, I'm going to go work with the U15 CPs at the Canada Game, is it called the Canada Game Center? But there's two really tall young girls. I'm going to spend probably 15, 20 minutes just with them on some things that they need that none of the other girls need. They're tall, they have a huge upside potential, but it's not easy being tall at that age and everybody else is small and dribbling around you and, and you're supposed to be out there defending them and they just dribble by you, so, right? And then you just have to take some time and do that. The other one I do is, like I say, give to the older players some leadership responsibility and helping the other players, holding them to that standard of what we want to do and making them like a, almost like a peer, especially with the girls team. I find that works where they're going to help. You got to be careful not everybody doesn't try to coach that player and it gets overwhelmed and just say, Sally, you're going to help her with this area. I want you to work with her on this area. And I'll really help her and help you very well. Okay? Any other questions? Yeah. So, yeah. So let's say... I'll just use an hour, which you probably have more, but I'll use that just to give an example. To me, the first thing is, is setting the tone when we come into practice. I want to start with something exciting and fun to get them to come to practice on time. I'm not starting with running three laps. I'm usually starting with a fun games approach because they want to be there on time. If I can get in the gym early, I'll give them some chance to get in and shoot and do things on their own. That doesn't happen very often. Usually another team, so we might be doing something in the hallway, but what I do, I do is I try to meet them in the hall before practice and catch up on how things are. So I'm getting that a check in on, on where they are mentally. I just, hey, how was it going? And, hey, remember when we get in there, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm really trying to get that meet and greet done early so I'm not wasting time. I always try to hide my vegetables in the spaghetti sauce and warm up. So I'm usually sprinkling in some connecting, the talking, and some skill work in with my dynamic warm up. And I'm probably taking 15 minutes with an age group team on that because they need work on uh, balance, agility, form, core, hip can, like they need that. I cannot not do that. Then I'm probably going to work on for about another 15 minutes on some kind of skill. I call it my pre-compete. Really working on, that would have been a pre-compete drill, that sh passing shooting drill. That's working on, because later on we're going to go compete pick and roll. I want to work on the skill of the passes and setting the pick. Or I'm going to work on my dribbling because we're going to use dribbling later on. We're going to work on our close out, or our, sorry, our, remember our hip hinge, short cut off, long off because we're going to play a lot of one-on-one -on -one later. Then I'm going to work on, for the next 15 minutes probably, somewhere in there, I'm going to work on my four phases of the game. Offensive transition, offense, defense, defense, transition. It might be three on three, four on four, two on two, but we're playing with some kind of those things. And then my last part of practice, we're probably putting it all together with some five on five and probably some time and score in there too, it's fun. But in between, I sprinkle in as much shooting as possible. I'd always have like a little shooting drill between each of those phases. I'm always getting shooting distributed throughout the entire practice. Okay. So, and it's better to distribute it than do one long shooting because I want them every time I go to a shooting drill, oh, we're doing a shooting drill, I gotta remember this, oh, we're doing that. Okay, so I distribute it. And then I always have a cool down debrief at the end. And if I'm limited on a practice time, I'll do that in the hall outside. And, and it's, again, what did we learn today? Getting them to talk and, and reminding them about bringing a snack and having some hydration 
And what's the one thing that you learned that you can do for next day? How can you practice with the little ones? Like, what can you do at home with your mom and dad or your brothers and sisters in the backyard or in the basement? What are, oh, oh yeah, we're going to do this. I love that stuff. So that's just the kind of my ideas on, on practicing. Okay. We good? Okay, I'll, I also want to thank Adam and thank uh, Basketball Manitoba and want to thank you for coaching. Uh, we are built on volunteers. And it, is, it amazes me when I travel the world and think how successful we're starting to become, but it's basically from coaches like you who are not paid, who are volunteering your time, doing this, uh, like I said, on, on, uh, on the passion of the game. And we are competing with some, some countries that are, they pay people a lot of money to coach, and uh, yet I think we're getting some, some really good results. And, and I do challenge you, though, to keep going and keep coming to clinics, get involved with the NCCP. I, I say the NCCP made me who I am. It taught me to keep growing as a coach. And, uh, and, it, and don't be afraid to, to uh, ask questions and try new things and be challenged. That's how I grow, and I'm sure that's the same way with you. I want to thank the players, too, for putting up with me. Good job.